DYA Games is a Spanish game development company founded by two brothers, Alberto Viges Carpio being the graphic artist and Daniel Viges Carpio being the programmer. I hope I didn't butcher those names. <laughs> Though not the most well known, they are no doubt a very talented pixel based game maker in my opinion. In fact, I find them very underrated. With 5 games under their belt, they've proven their ability to make fun and exciting experiences. And in today's episode, we're going to go over those same 5 titles. So without further ado, let's get started. DYA's debut entry into the gaming sphere, Super Star Path, a high-stakes puzzle shoot 'em up hybrid. This unique title pits players into levels that are split into two phases. The first phase is a high-stress, color-matching puzzle. Shooting an enemy opens up a path, creating an explosion that will crystallize surrounding enemies. When enemies are crystallized, they become indestructible. For this reason, the game strongly discourages shot spamming. However, if you destroy an enemy that's surrounded by other enemies of the same color, the explosion will spread and open up a wide path. Though other surrounding enemies of a non-matching color will be crystallized. So think very carefully and please do not be trigger happy, you'll regret it. After clearing the puzzle, this is where the second phase begins. Basically, this is the boss fight. You may now spam the living hell out of that goddamn shoot button and blow that boss into oblivion. As you progress each level, you collect gems and purchase new ships. You'll also encounter special alien enemies that carry upgrade points, which you will need to power up your ships. Super Star Path is a delightfully bite-sized experience with colorful pixel graphics, nice soundtrack, and addictive gameplay. If you're into both shooting games or puzzle games, you should really check this one out. It's quite an underrated gem. DYA's second release, Bot Vice, a cyberpunk-themed arcade-style shooter. Think Wild Guns meets Time Crisis with sprinkles of Mega Man mixed in. These elements and influences are the building blocks of this game's brand of fast-paced duck and cover shooting gameplay. You play as Aaron Saber, an ex-cop who is out for revenge against an evil criminal group known as the Wildbots. Discover and master a variety of weapons such as a machine gun, spread shot, flamethrower, rocket launcher, and grenades. Face off against fearsome foes, menacing bosses, and an even more menacing race against the clock. Oh, that time limit. That god damn. Time limits. Did I mention that this game is really freaking hard? You're going to be seeing Aaron Saber explode into Mega Man Orbs of Fire a lot. A whole lot. Despite the game's toughest nails difficulty, Bot Vice is an absolute indie darling. With its colorful pixel graphics, unrelenting challenge, and a banger of a synth soundtrack by Dominic Nenmark, Bot Vice is my favorite indie game released in 2016 and one of my all-time favorite games in general. I give it a thumbs up. Strikey Sisters is a fantasy-themed action brick breaker. An arcadey joyride filled with light-hearted charm, adorable characters, and loads of humor. Join the sassy Marie and timid Eline on a wondrous non-linear co-op adventure. If you're a fan of games like Breakout and Arkanoid, you'll be right at home. Break bricks and walls, collect power-ups, destroy enemies, and obliterate bosses. As you progress through the game's world map, you'll discover new branching paths filled with collectibles and secrets. VGM composer Dominic Nenmark makes a return to craft yet another amazing soundtrack jam-packed with whimsical synth goodness. Where Bot Vice was a more fast-paced white knuckle shoot fest, Strikey Sisters is a more laid-back, slower-paced affair with a decent level of challenge. DYA's third release is definitely one that shouldn't be passed on. I highly recommend it. This is Vivian. DYA's fourth release is a bold step forward deviating from its arcade sensibilities and goes into the terrifying realm of survival horror. Paying homage to horror classics such as Clock Tower, you'll be uncovering secrets, solving puzzles, and encountering truly frightening evils that'll leave you paranoid and on the edge. Painstakingly rendered 2D visuals capture the essence of 16-bit horror. Dominic Nenmark once again graces, or should I say curses us, with a horror-themed musical score that is truly macabre and unnerving. There are also multiple endings to uncover. What choices will you make? Uh, I could ask myself the same question, actually. <laughs> you see, uh, though I briefly played this game, I haven't actually finished it. 
I will get to it eventually, one day. Uh, uh, I, I swear I'm not a coward. I swear. DON'T, Don't JUDGE ME! Evil Tonight, DYA's fifth and latest release. Just like Viviet, their previous title, this new entry also takes homage to past horror classics. Though this time, less Clock Tower, more Resident Evil. As you explore an abandoned performing arts school, you manage inventory, conserve ammunition, solve puzzles, and fight off fearsome foes that lurk at every corner. The game's soundtrack is composed by Peter Jones. This is the only DIA game that I haven't played just yet, since I want to finish Vivi at first. Despite that, I wanted to showcase this title to nicely wrap up this DIA showcase. Evil Tonight looks really promising, and I'll eventually get to it one day. I can't wait to try it out. With that said, this concludes our DYA game showcase. Thanks for watching.